Welcome to the Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And on today's episode of Real Talk Christian, we're talking about beatless worship. Can you worship without a bass drop? Well, you're ready to drop the bass. Let's go. Mark Hyde, what's, what's going up, on, music lover? Well, dude, so I, I tried to do the <laughs> do, 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 drop the bass, but drop like my the, the coffee didn't let me get into my lower register. You should have just let me go. Do, 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 drop the bass. Yeah, but you know, maybe I should have done some sound effects and like or just be like drop, drop the bass. bass. I see, I, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> No, like I used to be able to hit some real low notes in choir, but like since I haven't like practiced getting that low, I can't, I can't get that low anymore. I don't know. All I keep hearing is tambourine, tambourine. Thank you, Paul Lindgren, putting Thanks, a tambourine Paul. in our music. Which, side note, we haven't talked about Paul in a little bit. Just so you guys know, Cowbell. this oh. song, you can get on um, Apple Music, Spotify, all those different things. called Joy. I'm pretty sure you can order the CD, too. Oh, not this one. But to say, his, I'm like, his, his, his last one, but his with his, yeah, Paradise, Paradise our, our which, first yeah. intro song. But so, and he's working on this album. I don't know when he's going to release this album. He's kind of gotten sidetracked a little bit on some other projects. Right, and COVID like, kind of put a big damper. Well, and COVID a and a new baby and all that. And just, so. you know, loving on his wife. So, you know. Right. Which, oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, Tambourine. Tambourine. Oh, um, shoot. Paul's wife's name. Katie. Katie. I'm like, I kept thinking, I'm like, no. <laughs> Joseph is married to Kimberly. I'm like, yes. I know it's another. K- I couldn't think what the. K- it's the cut sound. The it's cut the k- sound always the, the, throws me the, off. The sound that I cannot make. <laughs> the k- 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 <laughs> if people are not joining in for the first time ever in RTC, they're like, what are these guys talking about? But either way, they're like, off. Oh. We won't waste yours. But just so you know, speaking of the music and worship and the song, yeah, Paul Lindgren wrote this song for RTC. Yes. Called Joy. And you can find it on anywhere, anywhere music is sold and streamed. So. And you should probably go check out his other album where we've been and it's solid it is solid the, um, whole, the whole album is solid fool's gold is on one of my that's your fool's gold is on my big mood playlist paradise i mean come on we used it for our intro for how long pretty much the first season almost the whole first season yeah, yeah i think, I think we it was to, the whole first season did we switch to joy i thought we switched to joy maybe right before we went to a second season i don't remember somewhere in someone there. correct us but either way check out paul lingren yeah, spotify anywhere music or you can just click the show notes and it takes you right to a spotify page hey, but, and also check out our store well, where you say, get the rtc of, swag which this the big this, logo is not in the store this was a special one. promo from yep. our 50th episode which is not part of the store but this which if you're Listening, you, you sh- can't really see, but it's the RTC face mask. It looks like these. Just but it's has on the face RTC mask. on the side, and I have a gray one and a black one. We gave Marissa one the black one, right? But we also now have those. What are those things called? The face gators. Face gators. The I, neck gator necks. Gator necks. Neck, what they're called? Neck gators. Neck gators. I don't I know. It's the thing that wrap around your necks and yeah, they the pull ne- over your it's face. It's the neck gator. That's what it is. So the neck gator. Yeah, we have neck of, gators. Po- dude, okay, we gotta figure this part out because. They're talking about how that might revolutionize coaching and football and NFL and college. And people like coaches might continue to wear those for forever because people can't see their mouths when they talk. Because, uh, you know, like Bill Belichick always has the big one right in front of his face. The cheater? The cheater who doesn't want to be caught. Deflate you know, gate, whatever. Gate. Oh, wait, that's Tom Brady. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Not Tampa. Him. But, but you know, like, so that way, because, you know, I remember like coaches all the time, like, especially um, like, you know, here with Notre Dame. Um, Brian Kelly. Thank you. I was thinking of, I'm like, I'm like Pat Riley. No, that's not right. I don't know why I thought that, but Brian Kelly, whenever he would call plays, he would have the, the play calling up to his face and no one could see. Right. So, boop. So maybe we can get some, if you're a football coach, if you're Brian Kelly and you're listening, I'm just saying, if you're a football coach, dude, I don't care. I'll send you one. I'll, I will send you one. If you're a you football know, coach, maybe, you know, we got Christmas coming up we here do. soon and probably in about a month. Mm-hmm. Um, should we do another mega swag bag giveaway? Well, just change it a maybe little bit? We, we, or a free we, item from the store? Maybe we should do like a holiday giveaway. Ooh. Maybe we can... Oh, this God, is all on I the spot, by the way, people. This was not I got an rescheduled. Idea. Uh-oh. Okay. So we should, we should do like a special Christmas giveaway. Okay. And make a Christmas piece of swag to go with the swag Ooh. giveaway. I mean, we have the RTC logo with the Santa Claus hat on it that we've used in years past. That's what I'm thinking. 
With the, with, 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 but would our people do? Maybe if we have a snowflake behind it. Ooh, that's good. If we have a snowflake behind like, it. Maybe like Elsa, like, like let Elsa, it go, let it go into the unknown. You know, maybe maybe Sarah Taylor would like that with the snowflake oh. babies. You know, oh. which if you want to hear that fun story, that's on the church's YouTube channel about oh, we should, in vitro we fertilization. Should get, yeah, we should get them on to do. Talk about their story. Definitely. Yeah, super cool. We've heard a lot of cool stories over the years. So the easiest place, though, to find all the stories that we've talked to is go to realtalkrushabodcast.com, scroll down a little bit on that homepage, and you can get the links right there for right Tib, Sarah Naz, there. Paul Lindgren, uh, Beth Schneider, the Joe Duke, Frerichs, Joe Frerichs, Dudes and Dudes Dads, and Dads podcast. Um, the teens and college kids. No, nah, that's not on the front, though. No, but it's in there. It's at number five and six, I think, or something yeah, like that. I don't know. But there. either way, guys, check out the website. That's where all the conversations are at. Also, link to the merch store. Also, you can click any of the links to listen to virtually. We're, we're everywhere. We, we and are everywhere. We're worldwide, dude. We are worldwide. We got listeners down Shout in out. South Africa. I think Raina. I think that's her name and a bunch of our other friends. South Africa. Peru. Russia. We got Peru. We got UK. UK. We got Canada, which Australia. You know, we have Australia. We have India. We have I th- India. I think we have India. Yeah. We also have, uh, I think, Saudi Arabia, too, or I something thi- like that. So. And we're all, like, we've had people reach out to us from California, from Texas, from the East Coast, from everywhere. West Coast, um, down in Indianapolis. Canada. I mean, everywhere. I was going to say Indianapolis because, you know, Paul. Well, Paul. Paul Lindgren, well, so, yeah, I know came, a lot of people down in India as well. So He came up to be on the show, so. That's true. That's true. He, um, he made the commitment to drive to bring you all a message. Three, three episodes three of the Paul Lindgren story. You're going to, it's, it's. It's a tear jerk. Well, it's a tear jerker for me. Anyway. It's it, it it's just it's a but cool then, story of redemption. Then we had an, we had that, that other cool man. story with with the dudes and dads with Andy Lehman and, Dude, his, and his yeah. Stru- Which, you know, the speaking of at data through. recording, they actually did a specific interview with him and maybe his wife. I don't know, but about um, I think infertility and child loss and grieving and yeah. how they process all of that. That, that was so. a rough story to hear. Yeah, it was very rough. And that was on the dudes and dads. My ones. heart. I just I love Andy Lehman. My heart goes out. He's to just him a cool, all. dude. He's just so awesome. When we dropped the uh, dudes and dads, if you have not checked it out, go and check it out. When we dropped the tattoo conversation about you know can Chris have <laughs> tattoos, she goes, "Well, they better can because I have lots of them." That was his response, and I'm like, "Don't worry, buddy, we do too." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can say we now. You can. I got ink, but not like we we mono me. <laughs> nope, nope, just the Cairo. But either way, so but dude, let's jump into the conversation. Oh, well, actually, well, what kind of coffee? I'm we're so drinking excited tonight? just to jump into the conversation. So tonight we're drinking Dancing Crane back up in Northern right. Michigan. So this is one of Joel Demott's favorites. It is. We've had it a few times, it's and it's always dark roast. It's always an RTC favorite when we don't want to drink the RTC roast. Yep, yep. Because we drink. Uh, oh, I mean, we drink all the other stuff fast. This is the one that's hanging on though. But it's yeah. it's a dark roast. It's a good roast. It's a good, good, Although good roast. it's not a overly dark roast nope. to make you not want to drink it. It's like the perfect dark. But, you know, but it still has that little bit of a, what's the word? It's not really body, but it's almost like the, the fizz foam that a dark roast gives you. Even after you drink when you're at the bottom of your it's cup, the you get that feeling. velvety It's filling. like the Peruvian coffee that Joe Frerichs gave us. It has right. that real mouthful, although that was more silky That velvet. was silky velvety. This is more chocolatey This velvety. is chocolate. This yeah. is chocolatey yeah. velvety. Chocolatey. So it kind of just hangs on a little bit. So if you want their <laughs> coffee, just Facebook Dancing Crane Michigan and you'll find it. And if you want RTC coffee... Well, you know, it may it, every once in a while we throw an extra we bag do. in there for reviews. We do. So if you really want a shot at the RTC coffee, you got to leave a review right. on iTunes. Because right now we have no reviews to read. No reviews. And no we haven't reviews. had any for a few weeks. Nope. It's been a few weeks. It's been a few now. weeks. It's been a few weeks. But it's okay. It's I mean, okay. not really. But they can also leave this review on Facebook, too. So go ahead they and can. do that, too. But, hey, dude, right. let's jump in real right, quick. So it. we're talking <laughs> about... Beatless worship, worship B-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b- without beat. a beat. In other words, why do we always think that worship music is the only way we worship? Like whenever people talk about worship, it always goes back to music. And whenever you talk about worship, we had the worship wars of the 90s and thousands and people. Th- I, I got mean, I got a song in my head right boomers now. Boomers still think the worship wars are happening, but it's they're not happening anymore. I will the give is, you all my worship. I will give ah, you all. See? Yep. <laughs> for you alone. For you alone, alone. alone to yep. worship. Who did that? Matt, is that that's not Matt Redman, <sighs> no, is it? No. Um, 
It's a good is that question. Old Hill song? Maybe some no, old, no, no, that wasn't. Uh, I forget who did it, but I don't remember. It was it's one of the old. We're from when we were in youth group. It was, that was a youth group song. It was the day. well, was it like, was before. It was like late ninety or late nineties, early two thousands, I believe. I so think it like, was like two thousand. Yeah, that's like I think it was on like I think it was on like Wow, either two thousand or two thousand and two. Dang, like back. Well, two thousand and two was or maybe silver it, and blue. You I know think. what? No, it may have been ninety. Green and yellow. It may have been ninety nine. The the green and gold. That was my favorite. Well, they, they dropped that favorite. again, like two thousand three or four. They think they did green and yellow. Yeah, they like this was like yellow. This was like Not gold, gold but yellow, like green and gold, and that was my favorite. Wow! And dude, we've come a long way since then. You know, from yeah. the, I mean, for us, like we, I mean, I remember my dad had cassette tapes before CDs <laughs> were even out. Still I mean, have cassette know. tapes. And then you know we got CDs and people were kicking out Wow Worship. And but <laughs> yeah. but what's funny though is like let's 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 follow this rabbit trail a little bit because I remember there was Wow Music. Yep. But then there was Wow Worship. And they were different CDs because, like, well, God forbid, Barlow Girl and Toby Mac ended up on the worship CD. Well, they had they had Wow Rock. Yep. Remember Wow Rock? Because I and had. And they flipped the X. Then it was the yeah. X CD. That right. was the hard, yep. That was Tooth and Nails. That was. Uh, I, love I think tooth that and started stuff, in two thousand and one or two thousand two. The tooth X. Tooth and Nails stuff. Yeah, yeah. They had some good. That's where I first like heard Cutlass. Mm, was that's uh, right from, I fell in love from with Hawk Nelson and yeah. Thousand Crutch and right. August Reliant K and, and, and yep, yep, all, all those guys. Um, but you know, we we even in the Christian world separate what's normal Christian music versus okay, no, 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 this is worship music now. But you know, at the end of the day, you which know, I think is good, which is good. But so, I think the question though, I think is if you're going to do worship, it, I th- just I'm continuing this rabbit trail for just a okay. second. No, you keep going down the hole, buddy. <laughs> Go down the rabbit hole. The white rabbit's down there. <laughs> I swear he is. <laughs> um, Alice. But the difference between like Christian music and worship, I think, has to be looked at as what can be done in church. And if you're going to do something in church, right, as a corporate body doing a worshipful meaning towards God, I think it has to be theologically sound. Right. And but I think this will go later in the conversation. But I almost wonder if if because of the way we use that word, have we skewed the view of what worship actually is for mm. all of eternity? I th- <laughs> not all of eternity, yes. but you know so what I mean. So coming back out of the yeah. rabbit hole, back into the conversation. Back into the Mad Hats yes. coffee, sip, ta- coffee table. <laughs> it's the world is crazy here. <laughs> I feel like we are inviting people to the table of RTC <laughs> of where craziness. we have crazy conversations. Come so. on in. The water's fine. The coffee's hot. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Mine's but, cold, but it's okay. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. I think that, that we have lost, in this culture at least, we have lost the true meaning of worship. Okay. So... Let me ask you this then, because this is something maybe the listeners, you know, I, this is one of those conversations where if, if people have been in church world for forever, the Christianese word of worship, they, they know what it is. But the, I know we have a lot of listeners who are still trying to figure out this whole Jesus thing and, and yeah. how do I read a Bible and what does it look like to worship? And, you know, a lot of people who go, who, you know, now step into church for the first time and they're at these, for lack of a better word, mega churches where mm-hmm. worship music is huge. Some of these people don't even know this conversation exists. And then there's like us who come out of, you know, well, me who comes out of the conservative, independent, fundamental, we're the only ones right and the only ones who are going to go to, you know, go to heaven Baptist church. And, you <laughs> independent know, fundamentalist. Independent fundamentalist. Bible believing, Bible thumping Bible Baptist church. Bible thump Baptist. But, you know, Ch- chicken eating. So I grew out of that where all of a sudden it's like CCM, which, by the way, if anyone ever uses the word CCM, you know they're funny because. If you're yeah. in this Christian music world, it's just Christian music. It's not CCM. It's not contemporary Christian no, music. No, no one calls it that besides people who don't like it but <laughs> uh, or, or old people. But, um, you know, but I guess the question that we, I think, need to establish, I think we need to have a baseline to work off of and ask them the question of what is biblical worship? What mm. is it? If it's more than music, if we can we worship without a beat, what do you think is a good definition of? Of worship, there's a lot of good definitions. There's a lot of ways to worship. Okay, but do you think by the end of this we can boil it down to a sentence, though? <laughs> I can boil it. You down think to, we can give it a shot? Like I, that's the goal for this. I'm I, thinking it'd be good to get well, it down to a sentence. I think before we go and get it down to a basic sentence, I kind of want to go through some of the scriptures you have down oh, here. Oh, because that's what notes. we do at RTC. You got to follow the Bible. Because if we're talking about talk how do we worship, Christian. and if we're going to worship God. I mean, shouldn't we figure out how he wants to be worshipped? Yeah, like, it's not. Kind of it's not what how we want to worship him. It's how he requires right us to worship mm-hmm. him. So, yeah, I, I like the first verse you have it down here is First Corinthians ten thirty one. It says, "Whatever you eat, drink, <laughs> or do Sorry. whatever you eat <laughs> for our drink, listeners, or whatsoever you do for, do for our listeners." Glory of God. First Corinthians ten thirty one. For our listeners, for the listeners, not the viewers, but for the listeners, Mark's over here. 
doing sign language. Camp so motions, it, baby. It made me laugh. It wasn't sign. It was not sign language. That was camp motions, bro. Well, <laughs> from it, back when I was a were kid. You, were you using your hands? Yeah. Were you signing certain things? No. Sign language. <laughs> <laughs> you said, I mean, it's not like we said, were going like. You said eat, drink. <laughs> no, drink is. I, they, they always made a drink with two hands and not like bottoms up, which I think is funny. Well, that's because way. you were a fundy. <laughs> uh, that was garb. General <laughs> Assembly of Regular Baptists, which is the same thing. But uh, no, continue, dude. All right. Let's so, go. well, I mean, these are the scriptures you got. So yeah. I'm just reading through them. Uh, Psalms 103 2. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Oh, sorry. And forget not all his benefits. Uh, that is a good one. Yep. Uh, how do you praise God with your soul? Mark? Do you want to talk about it now or should we read the rest of the scripture? Well, I want to kind of dive into that one. All right, let's that dive into it. Let's dive one. into it. Because, you know, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. You know, so what is your soul? You know, the Bible talks about the soul is, for lack of a better word, the innerness. It's where the emotions are set. And it's also just where, like, it's who you are. As a I'll person. give you the Genesis 1 version. It's the breath that God breathed into right. it's us. What the makes breath of us life. It's what makes us distinct from all of creation. Right. You know, animals don't have souls and right. goldfishes don't have souls. Cats, did, cats God, eat souls. Well, God. <laughs> Cats eat souls, but God didn't breathe the breath of light into cats. He did into humans. So right. that's the distinction. That's where we get the word right. soul so, from. So the soul is the innermost depth of a person, I right. would say. So if you're worshiping with God with the innermost parts of your depth, that's where the heart cries out. Mm. That's where you feel the pain and the emotions. So would you feelings. say it's loving, uh, praising the Lord with your inner spirit self? I mean, it depends on if you think the spirit and the soul are different but because you know, we talk about the are heart they? the heart is the seat of the emotions in in the in the western world yes not the, the bowels no not the bowels like that's really funny yeah eastern <laughs> Christian, uh, eastern people the seat of your emotion is i mean how, you look at it imagine looking at janine and be like baby i love you all my bowels all my bowels everything that i got in my bowels i love you the with. whole i love you as long as the bowels <laughs> Are. Like, no, uh, that's nasty. But as the days are long, so are my bowels for you. <laughs> but it's true because you you, don't get, you get butterflies in your stomach or if you're feeling sick because right. you're stressed right. out. Like, it's an emotion. It, it's that. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was a huge fun. So you know, fun fact. No. <laughs> so the idea is worship all my soul. But the thing about the soul is, I think the soul easily forgets who you are in Christ. Because for me, as your soul, when I'm not doing well, I'm not doing well in my soul, and I need to remember and reflect and remind myself of the goodness of God. You know, it's kind of like in the Old Testament times. There's all the pillars that they put up, like the twelve stones after crossing, um, after crossing the Jordan. The the Passover where they remember the Passover lamb putting the blood over the, the the post and you know Jewish always have these remembrances remember the goodness of God what he did he's doing it right now he's going to do it in the future so okay. for this it's the idea praise the Lord oh my soul forget not his benefit so when I'm downtrodden when I'm downcasted remind myself of who God is what God has done and praise the Lord because of that even when you're not feeling like right it. Yeah, no, that's good. I can't put it any better than that. And that, I think, goes into worship because I think music and worship, we'll talk about this a little later too, is... It creates the emotion. It, worship that is helps. emotional. That's good. And Well, it helps tie the soul to the act. Right. And don't you think it's kind of funny, you know, growing up in, in Baptist land, we take so much emotion out of it. I, I mean, I know you grew up in Pentecostal land where yeah. it's like all emotion, but like... <laughs> it was all emotion. But so many Baptists, they're like, oh, we don't want to have an emotional experience. And I'm like, God, trade your emotions, dude. Get your head out your butt. Like, I mean... <laughs> emotions are bad, okay? <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, that's... The, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I almost went really... I, Salty Mark almost came out really bad at that second. But... Uh, you know what salty means? Um, I have a general idea of what it means, but yes. <laughs> I, I'm not going to I need touch to get it. this dude a dictionary. From uh, high dictionary. No, no. Spiteful. Uh, it's spiteful without, yeah. Okay. So Wait a second. You said get me a dictionary? No, I need to get all you Gen Zers a dictionary to know how to use the English language in the correct way. But the English is a living language. It's not a dead language. No. That has not. <laughs> what? We're not. This ain't Latin. <laughs> well, no, it's not once Latin. La once language stops, no, to change, there's a difference between there's bet difference between language and words and slang. It's true. That is the difference. You're using salty, and the way you used it is slang because it has a meaning. It has a definition, but it has a different definition if you use it with slang. Yeah. Either way, so salty Mark almost <laughs> came out and almost went at went at some boomers, but. Um, not you, but you know, but you know, but when we go talk about this, this whole idea will of you worship, you know, I think it's something to say, talk about where, you know, we get so emotionally invested when we sing and praise to right. God 
that that becomes almost like this is what worship is. So all other things like it's I don't, okay to I don't carry get, the TV. I don't get okay. an emotional high washing my dishes. I don't get an emotional high vacuuming my floor. I don't get an emotional high working. So it's that don't? worship. No, I hate it. Oh man, we washing differ. dishes do not bring me joy. We differ. When my wife washes dishes, my heart is just overcome with joy. I mean, when you wash dishes, bro, and, when oh, she's, oh, not, oh. and she's not home, and she ain't looking. We'll see. It's an act of love at that point. So then I wash dishes because I love my wife, and I share you responsibility. You no, die. I share responsibility. Right. So it still makes me happy. So Right. That's true. But, I mean, just the fact of not everything brings an emotional high like music and worship does. It doesn't always result in a response. I think it can. You know? And that's what I'm saying. That's what I want to talk about today. Yeah, that's, right. that's what I want to talk about. Right. But let's keep reading the scripture, though, uh, Romans, we get into too much. <laughs> Romans 12, 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Mm, that's a good one. Let's move on, though. I'm going to. Oh, that's, gonna, that's, a, that's a good one, too, I know. though. I know. All right, let's get going. I'm let's get going. We're going to read the rest of these, and then we can. This one is interesting. This one, you might not think of it. He's all like, hey, hey, guess what? This one's a good one. No, the caffeine that. kicked in, and I've had a lot today. <laughs> Colossians 3, 16 through 17. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with... What version is this? NIV. Yeah, Okay. There we go, because I'm like, this ain't my King Jimmy. It's spiritual <laughs> songs, but... Yeah, singing to God with, <laughs> with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to your God, the Father, through him. So this is where you can wash dishes and vacuum. Right, and right that's... There. But both of them are. This is the know? exact scripture I was thinking of when you said, oh, well, you mean, oh, typically you can't praise and worship, and you don't get that emotional feeling. Right, but but when we think about I worship, just sound like Adam we, yeah, there. you really did. Like that was some like you know the holiday nights, but um, but you know when we talk about this whole idea of worship, though, like right. so many times we want to limit worship to just music, and we don't think worship is all these other things. When in reality, we see present your body as a living sacrifice because this is your reasonable worship. Or um, I like this one. This is your spiritual worship. That's what a lot of the modern translations say instead of reasonable because the definition has changed. Because um, it's not the least you can do. It's it's reasonable. It's it's the least you can do. No, it's all you can do. Like that, that is spiritual worship. And then you know whatever you do, whether in deed or word, your actions and how you talk. Which isn't it kind of funny that a lot of times a lot of Christians say they love Jesus, and they've never cussed ever, and then they worship, but then they tear people down with their words. Like, are they worshiping in word and deed? Are they doing like everything they say? Man, I think this God? Democrat should be shot. But I love Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. That was my funny voice. Got got to get my funny voice out here. Say, we got to be careful. This is recorded before the election was held. We don't know what's going to happen here in a little bit. Well, I'm just saying in general, you shouldn't speak like that. No, like you're supposed to love everyone. But, you know, at the end of the day, though. Well, typically, fundies are Republicans. In so, uh, the, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and in these verses so far, it's very obvious and plain that, you know, how you handle yourself physically emotionally, and even how you speak, all is worship. Which then begs the question of, A, why don't we view these things as, I mean, heck, as a single, like, as not even a single, but like as, as like a stay-at-home mom or a, or a, honestly, single mom, single dad, whatever, you know, how can we wipe butts to the glory of God? How can we, you know, as, you know, for you as a steel worker or me, you know, designing websites and content, how do we do that to glorify God when it's just making someone else a lot of money and making ourselves like, how, how, how does that work? Cause you don't do it for yourself and you don't do it for others. You do it for God. Right. So I guess the change like? is, yeah. So what does that look like? It's a change of mindset. Okay. Okay. It's, it's a reforming and a renewing of your mind. Oh, Which that's Romans. Uh, Romans. That was, that's, <laughs> that's Romans. I didn't bring that one out here. Yeah. yeah. Renewing your mind. And so when you renew your mind, uh, you look at things a little bit different. Okay. When I'm, uh, when I'm disciplining my children, you know, people go, how are you doing that for the glory of God? Well, I'm doing it because I want to show them that even though there's a consequence to a bad choice, there's still love. And this is exactly how God views what happens with us and our relationship with him. Mm -hmm. When we make a bad choice, there's a consequence, but he still loves us. And so that's a teaching moment in work. All right. So I'm working and I'm making somebody money, and I'm making some myself money, but how can I do for that for God? Well, if I do it well, and I do my Matthew 5, 16, 
let your light so shine before men that they see your, your good works. Good, see your good works. See your good works. They'll glorify your Father in heaven. So if I do it in a Christ-like manner, keeping my speech above reproach, making sure I work hard, don't slack off, um, be the best worker that I can be because I'm not doing it for myself or my pride or for the company, but I'm doing it for the glory of God so people can see my good works mm. and glorify God. So that's how you can do it in work. And actions around the home you're taken care of. Like uh, I think of my wife who's a stay-at-home mom. You mm. know, she cooks, she cleans, she takes care of the kids. Uh, these are all things that are teaching our children stuff, are helping the family, the core family out so that um, we're able to do other ministries or whatever, and, and we take care of each other. So mm-hmm. there's all sorts of loving things that we glorify God by doing these things to each other. I mean, that was one of Christ's commands. Christ said, Christ's law, at least according to Galatians, thank you, Paul, Galatians 2 through 5 talks about how we should love one another as Christ has loved us. That is Christ's law. Mm-hmm. So showing love towards people, um, this also brings glory to God. Because we're obeying his commands. So what would be a practical way? You know, I'm, I'm thinking of someone out here listening, like, okay, we talked about Janio a little bit, talked about you and these different things. You want to talk about you? Let's talk about you. Talk about me. No. <laughs> talk about it. Talk about it. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you it. off. Whenever I ask questions, that means I'm trying to redirect it from me. I know. But, you know, so I'm trying to think of a, 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 someone's listening right now, and they're like, okay, cool. Like, I, I get it. I need to change my attitude because, you know, worship starts from a, a, a place of attitude. In fact, of why? Ask them the question of why. But are there different ways to worship? Like, you know, like for someone, they might be like, okay, that's cool that Janine wants to stay home with kids. Me, I don't. Or it's cool that someone wants to do this, but, you know, me, I don't. Are there different ways to worship God? Does God require us to worship in very specific ways? Like are there commands in Scripture? Um are there other ways to maybe just experience God, not necessarily worship him, but experience? Cause a lot of times mm. we're looking for that worship experience. Mm. You know, you know what I'm saying? Man, I you twitch whatever saying? you say like, that. Like we're looking for that experience. So how does someone who's listening to this, maybe separate them or combine them or have a good outlook on what we're supposed to do and all that. I don't know if necessarily having to have an experience is biblical. Mm, okay. Um, I look at the story of Job. Well, that was an experience. Well, no, I look at the experience of Job, but prior to his experience, there wasn't a whole lot of experience that was talked about between him, uh, him and God, other right. than he served God and he was righteous. Mm-hmm. God said, have you considered my servant Job? Because he served him faithfully. And his experience and, wasn't even a good one. And if we go back to looking at Thomas of Didymus, Tom, Thomas Didymus, Doubting, Doubting, Doubting Thomas, Thomas uh, you know, Christ told him, uh, you believe because you have seen. So that experience. But blessed are those who have not seen, yet not, not, not experienced, but yet still believe. Mm-hmm. So are we missing a blessing? Because mm-hmm. we don't get okay. Like if, if I'm demanding from God, which first of all, good luck demanding anything from God because God is holy and sovereign and they don't even need us. Who are you, you pea-brained snap of a child of... Satan, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's quite worded that way, but... That, that comes from uh, what we've referred to in my family as the Jibel, the Janiel Bible. Oh, <laughs> like, she, what's the Jibel, she, bro? She, well, we can't say it's from the Bible, so whenever uh, she says something and it's, like, really Where funny... That and, like, yeah, That's like, the Jibel. Yeah, it's from the Jibel, so Jibel chapter 1. Verse really 16. Funny. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I used to joke from that, you know, that's from the MIT, the what? The Mark International translation. Right, there you and they're go. like, huh? Oh, you stupid Mark. Yeah, I got yeah, that joke. Yeah. So but yeah, no, so I, I don't necessarily agree that you have to have an emotion or an experience, an emotional experience, right, to know who God is. Um, I think there that God does different things for different people. And I believe there's a greater blessing for those who do not need a sign or an experience. Okay. To believe in God. Now those who need that. God knows that, and so he may allow that experience to ha- may allow that experience to happen. Not that he will, but may. And if he does, great. But then again, my question is, is are we missing out on a blessing? <laughs> right. Because it's yep. blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believed. Right. Uh, you know, the Jews um, back in the time of Jesus and even before then um, always had a tendency to ask for a sign. Lord, show us a sign. And right. it's like, that's why he made that statement. Like, 
All right, I'll give you a sign, just like Thomas wanted a sign. To but, he, prove it. but he even said, you know, you still won't believe if I give you one. Right. I've already given you many. Right, exactly. So um, we can just look at the Bible, and you can see all the signs that you want to see. Mm-hmm. Um, if you need anything beyond that, well, I mean, <laughs> tough cookies. <laughs> <laughs> tough, tough cookies. Tough, tough, that's a good one. Tough cookies. Tough cookies. Tough cookies. <laughs> tough cookies. So, um, yeah, so that's just So, we, I mean, you know. But, yeah. Uh, but, I, if, but if we... If we don't need an experience to experience God, it, yeah, how does that work then? So you can experience them through the Bible. You can experience them through prayer. It's a heart condition of you towards him, not necessarily him towards you. Oh, he's already, wait a minute. Okay, okay. He's already done everything he has to do. Okay, so I look at it as there's a, there's a middle meeting point. All right? So 2,000 years ago, God did his part. God sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. That we have a sacrifice for the penalty of death. There's uh, not just a covering, but a cleansing of his blood over our sins. And because of that, he's fulfilled um, the call. Now it's our job to respond to the call. And this gets into, well, what does that mean? Well, <laughs> you can take it two different ways. There's the Armenian approach where you control it and it's all about you, or there's the uh, Calvinistic approach where it's, well, it's all been predestined anyways. Right. And God's so everything sovereignty. everything that's going to happen, God has already led that led you and directed you for every experience that you're going to make right. in order to teach you something or show you something or to do something for you, good or bad. Um, but all bad things are good for God. So, <laughs> yep, yep. I mean, so it's all good. But uh, uh, this is a refining process that God takes us through. So it all depends on how you look at it as to what does that mean. Right. You know, and, and something I've thought about, cause you know, I don't think it's wrong to say that we can experience God in many forms. You I know what I mean? I don't, cause like, you I know, don't disagree that we can't but if experience you're, but if you, if it, but that's, I think if that's what if you're, that's looking, what you're for. looking for. Yes. So then I guess the question is why you churches create what they actually call worship experiences. <laughs> know what I'm saying? No, know what I mean? Because Western Christianity is very fallen from what it should be. Mm. <laughs> That's why. Um, man, I always feel like I'm picking on the church, but it's true. Um, there's there's certain scripture, all scripture really, not just certain scripture, but the whole Bible uh, gives us every bit of knowledge we need to know, and nowhere do I see anywhere where it says you have to experience God to believe in God. No, I see the opposite where it says you can believe in God and not experience anything. And you're blessed for doing that. You're blessed. He's given you everything you need. He's come, he's met you halfway. Now it's your turn to do the other half. Right. Right. And I, I want to read this quote that I was trying to pull it up. It was uh, found scratched into a wall at Auschwitz, which we know what that, we know what Auschwitz is. I yeah, mean, that's right. the, the Jewish concentration. That's the Holocaust, basically. Holocaust, yeah. which I still don't know why people think that didn't happen. But the quote is, and this was, yeah. There's no name was attached. This was literally etched onto a wall. It says, I believe in the sun when it's not shining. I believe in love when I don't feel it. I believe in God even when he is silent. Mm. And that's a Christian in a Jewish, well, not, not just Jewish, but that's, that's a Christian in a concentration camp. Right. Same well, it's Corey Tinboom and Frank, these the, people who never, ever gave up. You know, they were like, well, just because we're in a bad situation doesn't mean God is against us. So, I, you know, there's that old, old argument atheists use all the time. They're like, you can't prove that there's a God because you can't see God. People And Christians are always like, well, you can't, you can't see, see the wind. wind. And it's like, yeah, but you can still feel it, so there's still a fact. But here's what I, I have to say. And you guys can quote me on this one. <laughs> uh, can a blind man see colors? No, he can't see Does anything. it make him any less real? No. So, I mean, as a, I'm a blind man, the Bible talks about how we're blind. Um, does that mean God's not there just because I can't see him or feel him? Because you can't feel a color, right? No, but but the Bible says we're, still there. we're dead and like we're not we're not sick. We're dead. And you, right. A dead man can't be made alive unless right. some outside force somehow makes it. Now there there are experiences, and, and we get joy and we get peace and we get these things from following him. But is it because he's having? to show us signs and stuff. No, it's because of who he is and our recognition, that renewing of our mind of seeing who God truly is. He's the almighty, the creator of all things without him. I can't take my next breath. So 
how wonderful he is. So I guess the question then is, let's say someone finds himself in that spot, you know, mm-hmm. where they're like, you know what, Mark Fuller, I, I, I follow Jesus. I've been trying to pursue him, but guys, I, I'm not feeling it. Like, like I'm, I'm, I feel like God doesn't hear my prayers. I feel like when I pray, it just hits the ceiling and falls back down. When I read the Bible, I can't get anything out of it. When I go to church, I feel alone. How can I still worship in spirit and in truth? How can I still do these things? Is there any encouragement you can give me to worship God even when I don't feel close to God? Oh. I like asking the big questions and then sitting back. Yeah, and uh, my mind goes to Paul and Silas in prison. Oh, okay. And, my mind didn't go there, but okay. And so I look at Paul and si- Silas. They were beaten. Actually, Paul had been beaten many a times and left for dead to the point where um, some scholars believe that the time when he went to the third heaven, that that was after one of the stonings, and he probably lost consciousness and then like partially died and went to the third heaven, and then God sent him back to his body. It's just a theory. It's yeah, a theory. There's a lot of theories around that one. Yeah, it's a theory. I'm not saying it's biblical truth because the Bible doesn't say that, so we don't know. It says know. what it says. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not adding to the Bible. I'm just saying that there's a theory out there about that. Um, <clears throat> but countless times he was beaten and. Uh, actually, he was beaten outside of the temple so much so that the Roman soldiers had to come down from Fort Antonia <laughs> to help him because he was a Roman right, citizen. Yep. And so um, I look at guys who, uh, like Paul and Silas, who were in the cave, or in the cave, <laughs> in the jail. That was David. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Paul Anyways, and Silas chilling in a prison. So, not chilling. I mean, they were beaten, they were beaten and shackled, and, and, and what did they do? Cole, and it wasn't a modern-day jail where yeah. they got Mickey D's and a private bathroom in it. Right, and no, some, it's, a, it's, some it's, sunshine a, it's a, probably a musty, drippy, uh, worst place And they didn't have ever. plumbing. No plumbing. Yeah, so you know what's going on there. Ex- excrements in there and... All Can you sorts imagine of the smell, dude? Oh, it's got to be horrible. Uh, and what were they doing? What did they find? And and uh, we as Christians, most of us have never been in a situation like that. No. And they're not in there by themselves. No, they're in there with hardened criminals, criminals of Rome. Right. Like, it wasn't like they were just there by themselves. We always picture, like, Paul and Silas in a jail cell by themselves. Right. Like, 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 the, like the old town, like, Andy Griffith's sheriff yeah. office. But more just... than likely, they were probably shackled with other prisoners, seeing as how when their shackles were released and doors were open, um, the other prisoners had a way to escape, too. And Paul and Silas t- said, no, stay here, and then called to the jailer. Right. Um, so you figure that they were probably in a similar cell, shackled together. That's typically... Um, especially as Romans, how they kept people from escaping was they would shackle a bunch of them together. Right. Um, and so I look at that that and the smells, like you said, because they didn't have a they didn't have toilets and Romans weren't that nice. And they didn't have lights and they didn't have. I mean, it was just, it was it was junk. It was it was yeah. a crap environment. Right. And so um, and what were they doing, man? They were singing and praising. Yeah, the whole time gospel singing is what so, they were doing. They I, I'm sure. Him, I'm sure at that point, being beaten. Uh, they they weren't feeling t- too great about life, but then they remembered who they served. And then they, I mean, and then you go to Paul talking in, oh, was it might have been Galatians where he's talking about you know, he, and then he was shipwrecked. I mean, we we read that in Acts, but <laughs> oh, geez, he's like, yeah. we were shipwrecked. Oh, oh, and by the way, after he got shipwrecked, he had to go to the shore. Oh snap! He got bit by a snake. Yeah, like, right. bro, like that's kind of one of those things where it's like after you're having a really bad day and then you stub your toe and you're like, "That's it, well, I'm done." And even Screw if we this. if we don't even go into the actual physical things, well, what about the emotional things? He talks about Paul says he has a thorn in his side that God just will not take away. I don't know if that was a physical ailment or if it was a you know some person or what it could right. be anything but, but, but the bible says that but the he fact three separate times asked god to take and this it wasn't like uh hey yo jesus bless the sandwich bless my food i'll take this would that be dope like yeah. it was a it was like cry l- out. L- lamenting over right. it like three separate times take this from me and, and god's like nope nope so um those times when you feel alone those times when you feel distant um hold on to god and draw near to god and God will draw near to you. The more I find that I get into his word, and the more I find that I pray, even when I don't feel like it, eventually the closer I get. Sometimes it's just the discipline of doing. Mm. Like not doing because you have to do it, because that's work-based faith, and that's not what Christianity is. No, that's not the That's gospel. not faith at all. Um, but you're doing it because you do. If you're a Christian, you have to have some 
a semblance of love towards God. Right. And, right? and towards others. And towards others. That's like two that you're not really a Christian if you don't have those. So even if you love God, you may not. There's times, and I'll, 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 this is my final thought. I'm going to throw out my final thought. Oh, dang. I thought to ask another leading question. Oh, okay. Well, maybe it's not my final thought. Uh, no, you give it your final thought, then I'll, I'll, I'll see what So I look is. at my, my wife and I, all okay. right? We've been married almost six years. And what's your anniversary, by the way? Uh, well, I guess not. Well, it's, he hesitated, Janiel. I know when it he is. He hesitated. I was going to say it's not almost. It's like five and a half years. At no, the time so I'm just curious. So what, when but is your anniversary? It's uh, May May 15th. Okay. I had to think about it. So it's May 15th, 2016. He hesitated. So, but so, so you guys, you've been married for a little bit. Yeah. So about five and a half years. Um, and there have been times when both my wife, she's expressed this to me. There's been times where we didn't feel like loving each other. Mm. We loved each other, but we didn't feel like it because we were angry or we were upset or we were miscommunication, miscommunication, or, or the fact that we were both so busy or I was so busy with a job or, or I was away that we just didn't have time to connect with each and other. And then so, she's dealing with the kids and you both are well, dealing with Well, even before kids, but yeah, all, all that. So there's been times where we didn't feel love towards each other, but it doesn't mean we don't love each other. Right. You know, it doesn't mean that we don't still want to serve each other out of love. Um, we don't always feel like it. There's, my wife does not always feel like having to do the dishes, so I, I have a clean household. I don't always feel like going to work to provide a, a living for my family. I, don't, I mean, there, there's all sorts of stuff that I don't feel, she doesn't feel, but we do because we love each other. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't, I'm sure she doesn't always enjoy cleaning the bathroom, and uh, I don't always enjoy mowing the grass. You know, it, and this is this small stuff. It's marriage stuff, but it's it. But it's the stuff uh, of it's, these are things that you guys still do out of you love do for it, one uh, another. Exactly, and it's it, and and it's not the problem that we have in, as Western Christians today is that we feel like that if we don't have this love towards God, that we can't have a relationship with God, or we can't be close to God. No, you can be just as close to God without a feeling as you can with a feeling, mm. and and that is spending time with Him and doing what he's asked us to do, which is really simple stuff. Two things cover all the commandments, and one is, is what is called by, by Paul Christ's law. And, and so number one is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I don't see emotions, but you should, you know, emotions is the heart. It doesn't say only love him when you have emotions. No, but it, it, it is, I mean, love all your heart. That is where the That's seat of your with, emotion lays. Yeah, you should love him with your emotions. But not only love him but not, when there's emotions. Because there's reciprocating. Because God lets you have an experience, now right. I'll love you. Right. But, yeah, exactly. And, and it doesn't say only when you have emotions should you love him. Right. That's manipulation. Right. It says you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, which we really need to break those four out until they could be, each be a separate podcast. That'd be cool. Um, and then, like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus said to his disciples, love your brother, love each other, as I have loved you. Christ has loved you. <laughs> Man, that's a tall order. <laughs> like, right. So I can be like, well, I'm a, I'm a fat slob, but, you know, I love you like I would a flat, fat slob. Or I could be like, no, I love you like Christ loves you. <laughs> Bam. Like right. Christ always magnified it. Um, and that's actually what Paul refers to as Christ's law mm -hmm. in Galatians. Uh, Galatians 5, I believe it is. And so uh, we do these things. We follow his commands, not out of have to, but out of love. And love is not dictated by our emotions. If we follow our emotions, our mo emotions will lead us astray. You want to be that person that is tossed to and fro like a wave in the sea? Follow your emotions. That, that the, the whole follow your heart movement that is going on in this country today is nothing but a lie from the pit of hell. Mm. It's from the pit of hell because following your emotions, my emotion could change a hundred times today. You might not feel like loving Janiel or your yeah, kids so, or me or whoever. So, so I say, all right, I don't love Janiel today, so I'm divorcing her. I don't love Mark today, so I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna tell him off. I I, I don't do this. Oh, oh, well, tomorrow. Well, never mind. I changed my mind because I, I love you guys now. And so, but what's that gonna do for our relationship? It's gonna destroy our relationship. It'll destroy my relationship with my wife, with my brother. And so you, the. The heart is deceitfully wicked, and who can know it? So if the heart is deceitfully wicked, why would we follow a wicked heart? That's what the Bible says. That's what God says about our hearts. So I, that's just the way I feel about it, and that's why I said it was my final thought, because I, I don't know how to sum it up be better in my mind of worshiping God with a, 
out worship. You got to worship with your heart, all your emotions, your soul with your inner being, which is what we saw in Psalms one hundred three two. Right. With your mind, all right. That we're doing right now. <laughs> we're doing that right now. You're constantly um, studying scripture, talking about scripture, working through all this stuff. And then with all your strength, that's where 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever you eat, drink, and do, do to the glory of God. I mean, that's <laughs> that's right. all that stuff. And, and this is where I was thinking about bringing it back, though, thinking of worship, though. But in Scripture, we do see commands. And I don't want to go too much longer, but we see commands to sing praises to God. We see oh, that, yeah. you know, where it's like... Well, um, that's part of loving them with Isaiah our strength 12, and 5, our heart. Sing to the Lord because he has done glorious things. Not, not, not so that. Right. Not, not so that, but sing to the Lord because, because he has done... Gl- Right. Great, glorious things, and then and then it's also a proclamation. Let this be known to all the world, and even Psalm ninety five one through six. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the Rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving, extolling with music and song. For the Lord is and this is the, because because the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Not saying that there are other gods, but in, in the well, land, like it's gods like, that we've made as idols. Correct. In our, in correct. Stuff, yep. Yeah. In the hands are the depth of the earth, and the mountains peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it. His hand formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let's kneel before our maker. Which it's interesting because we see bow. We also see other places where, you know, extend your hands. You see, you know, people just laying, like, legit. They called it prostrate on the ground. Like, just, like fall out, like, right. like please don't, like, like, and all reverence, Any, please don't kill me. Anytime thing. an angel or God appeared to anybody, bam. bam. What does what John say in Revelation? He said he fell uh, down and his legs gave out like a, the legs of a dead man or something and fell down. He, he legit like, he like, just like, <laughs> like just dropped. But then also we see dance like, you know, lift, 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 your, lift, lift your hands, lift your right. voice, David. dance, David, David, all these different things. So, but this when is where the I think of the Lord moves this in is what heart. I think is interesting because sing to the Lord because for since he has done great things. And I think what David, well, or not David, what did Paul, and was it Silas? It was Paul and Silas, not Barnabas, but Paul and Silas, what did they do? They sang. What did Jesus do before, like at the very, very, what's the very last thing Jesus did before he was arrested? He sang with his disciples. Um, you see all these different things that music has a way to speak where words fall short sometimes. He sang with his disciples? Yeah, they sang a hymn and then they departed at the Last Supper. It says they oh, yeah, yeah, left. but and yeah, then he that was was the, uh, yeah, I was sitting here thinking like, well, that's before they prayed in the garden. My bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I was gonna say, it wasn't I the bet, last like, thing before he went out to the garden and then all the so, stuff happened. Sorry, um, Mark, anyways, I didn't mean, I but, but but the, the last supper, the last thing they did is they yeah, sang right. a yep, song yep, together. Yep. I, I know what you're talking about, and now. so I think we we don't want to neglect, and I don't think we're saying this, we're not saying that music isn't worship because it's a big no, aspect it, it, of it is. And what's interesting, it's an expression, is church singing is one of the very few spots in the world where public singing is a thing. And people mm-hmm. who are outsiders are like, this is weird. Why are we singing to, like, it's not a concert. We're like, we're not just like going nuts. We're, we're singing to, who are we singing to? <laughs> the, this guy up sense. here can hardly even play the guitar or sing. Why are we singing? Well, like we're singing. They're singing to him. What? <laughs> right, but it talks about to sing because that point our emotions when we're downtrodden and when we feel weak and when we're in a bad place. That's why worship music, well, church right. congregational singing, and, go, and this is why I think actually physically getting your butt into a church building rather than just worshiping online at your own house is huge because you, you're looking around and you're like, there's other people here who are like me, but, and let's all praise the name of God together. There's something beautiful and powerful that music just speaks in our souls because God invented art. God there is, but there's music, something beautiful you know? and worship by yourself as well. Oh, I, I mean, agree, and I agree, and that's yeah. what we need to do. And, you know, something, a, a word I wrote down the, the when I was thinking about and what are real – everyday examples of worshiping God in the everyday. And it's went back to my word for 2020 and I've been trying hard, man. Do you remember what Disaster the word was? Or <laughs> no, that's the whole, that's the world's word. Oh, for yeah. 2020. yeah. I don't remember what yours Mine was behold. Oh, that's right. Cause last year's was rest uh, or be still. It was be still, be last still year. and know that I'm God. That right. was the, but this went into behold. Uh, right. It's no longer a time to just be still and know that he's God, but it's behold the wondrous things. You know, my, my counselor, Neil, he was telling me, you know, when you don't feel like worshiping God, just look around and and behold what God has blessed you with, mm-hmm. or beho- behold who God is. Like, or you see God in like you know I see like in every sunset and every sunrise. What I don't remember what that song is. It might be Chris Tomlin one or something like that. Maybe Paul Veloche. I don't know. But I just think of indescribable. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that one. That one. So, um, 
to the highest of highs, to the, the depths of the, of the sea. sea, and the fact of it's indescribable how we creation can, revealing her majesty. Yeah, we it's indescribable. Um, we 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 don't know how to describe it, but we're gonna praise God you the best yeah. way that we can because we behold the goodness of the Lord. We've tasted and seen right. that it is good, so therefore I'll do it. And or so make to, a joyful noise unto the Lord. I mean, that's what Psalms talk about. But right. I, whenever I so when you're in a lowly place, yeah. Just music do, is a beautiful thing, but not just like, oh, I'm in a low place, so I'm going to listen to All American Rejects and Good Charlotte <laughs> and the emo music that's going to make me yeah. more sad or you know, all these different things or panic, but rather what is uplifting to your soul and your spirit, mm. you know, what a beautiful name it is. Um, Nothing I, come past it. Like, like, you know, I could sing of your love forever, which is kind oh. of a dorky, <laughs> the old Darlene Zesh or whatever that's it is. That's a good one. Or, um, or even some of the stuff that we're singing now, like good and gracious King or Christ is mine for every more, ever more, or, uh, build my life. All these beautiful worship songs that we sing in churches right now. That's why we sing them. And that's why I know for, at least for our church, for, for Southside, we actually break the service up into three different part portions. If you look at the website, it'll say this, we have worship through singing, worship through giving worship through teaching. Right. We flat out say all of these are worship to God because of, of, of what we're doing with it. Right. But you know, worship. Music is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And Paul Beloche, our, our boy Paul, different Paul, um, Beloche. you know, he he said in an article for Focus on Family, or Balachi, I always said Paul, Paul, Paul Balachi. It's all I used to say, but no, yeah. Paul Beloche. He said, day to day, I look for opportunities to point out the hand of God, either in a glorious sunset, a striking cloud formation, or an animal in the backyard. I encourage my family to appreciate the beauty in the moment, connect that moment to the creator behind it, which is go back to Romans one where worship the creator, not the created. Right. And then remembering God's blessings are the key to a worshiping heart. Remember what God has done, a heart that desires to live a life of worship through singing, serving, loving, and obeying. And if you can't think of anything to worship God, just do this. <sighs> Breathe. <laughs> I mean, he gives you each of those breaths, so that's it. Any other last thoughts from you, my friend? No, man, I'm I'm finished. I'm fanus. I don't. Time for fun facts with Philly. <laughs> and God created that. Bam. <laughs> well, actually, um, no, it was God. Well, yeah, it, I mean. it was God. God created my kids. He used. <laughs> Me and my wife, but he created my kids. That's and he breathed the breath of life into them. So I agree with that. Fun Y'all fact: still did the deed. <laughs> fun fact of today doesn't mean that it would take. <laughs> fun fact of the day: cherophobia. Ch- wait, wait, like like a like a ch- chiro chiro. I'm sorry, chirophobia. What's, what's, okay. Chiro, okay. Ch- Chiro what is this, like a British podcast now? <laughs> Chiro. Chiro. Chirophobia is an irrational fear of fun or happiness. Oh, come on. What? That's one phobia I wouldn't like to have. It would probably mean they would fear these fun facts. <laughs> so there's a real thing. I, I don't think that's a phobia. I think you're broken. Ch- Chirophobia. You're just broken. <laughs> I'm scared of being happy. <laughs> How is that a thing? <laughs> Chirophobia, man. You're scared of being happy? Or now, having fun. Now, I know there's a lot of people who... I, I think that's just emo. That's not cheerophobia. That's just emo. They're just sad just people. Emo. But, you know, I mean, I've heard of people where it's like, you know, they've never known how to be loved, so they don't know how to experience it. But you're just scared of it? But scared of being happy or having fun is cheerophobia. I mean, I guess we... Dropped so, the Halloween podcast a little bit ago, so <laughs> so next time that, next time somebody's like being Debbie Downer, <laughs> just be like, "Do you have a severe case of cheerophobia?" And then just walk away. <laughs> They're like, what? what? And then just be like, "Peace, <laughs> I'm out." But speaking of peace, we're out. Make sure you check us out the website, realtalkchristianpodcast dot com, Facebook, Instagram, email, realtalkchristianpodcast at gmail dot com. You can also text us at five seven four four zero zero five three. Five two. Yeah. If you can't remember the number like I do, go to the website. It's all there. We'd love to chat with you. Leave us a review Please. on iTunes. We'll send you a mini swag bag. We still try to do that with every single review that we get. You can also leave a review on Facebook at Real Talk Christian Podcast. And we'll still send you a mini yeah. swag bag for doing that. Just let us know. Yeah. Just, Just let us know. You gotta, you gotta give us your information, which the best way to do that is through the through the email, Real Christian Podcast. Real talk. Just Christian hit us up. You know, a little bit ago, I do want to say thank you to our listeners. Yeah. I don't know. I, I know you saw this. Back in early October, we crossed the 10,000 download mark. We did. 10,000 awesome. downloads of our podcast. Whoop, bro. whoop. Dude, 
You guys are amazing. Like, that's not us downloading our own crap. Like, I mean, we try, but not that many. Yeah, not, not that many. <laughs> but seriously, all you guys who listen, thank you for listening. Thank you so but much. Just keep sharing it, man. Just just literally just keep sharing Definitely. the podcast goodness. But either way, until next time, guys. Take it easy. <laughs>